thanks everybody and uh, thanks for, st for sticking with us. Um, I, we realise it's been a very long day and I am the queen of getting of racing through things so it probably won't take very long at all. Um, but I'll try and keep the energy up for you as much as possible. So my name is Michelle Tuher and I'm from NUI Galway who are the lead partner on this project Collaborative Knowledge Exchange for Learning Impact. And we are partnering with Dublin City University, University of Limerick, and Mary Mackler College Limerick, all of whom have representatives today. And the fact that they've stayed with us for the day, I think is a really good sign as well that they're invested <laughs> as much as we are. Um, so key to uh, the, this project uh, is our awareness of the, the pivotal role that heads of school, department, and colleges have in affecting local systemic change. Um, and this, we're keeping this, this is very kind of to the forefront of, of everything that we are, are, are doing. Um, and the idea that if we do really want to enhance teaching and learning in our institutions, and build that digital capacity, we need to engage these figures. It's, in, it's incredibly important because of the reach that they have um, and the, the, the key player that they are in it. <coughs> um, we we recognise that each of the institutions already have um, leadership training in some form or another for people in these roles, but oftentimes this um, training tends to be quite generic and it also tends to be management oriented. Um, and it, it lacks the nuancing of the, the context that these people are operating in. The teaching and learning context, the, the things that they're going to be dealing with on the ground. And we, we would like to address this. We'd like to address this, these requirements um, that we feel currently aren't, um, aren't there for them. So what we would like to do is we would like to look at ways where we can have tailored supports and resources and many of which already um, exist based on an institutional needs analysis or in needs analysis within each of the institutions we want to help ensure that our heads are kind of up to speed on key policies on good practice and research and teaching and learning and technology um, and, and in doing that build their confidence as leaders in these contexts. Um, we want to provide them with accessible resources. We're very conscious that they are time, time pure, t poor, <laughs> uh, apologies. Um, so, you know, we recognize the need for something that's flexible. Um, um, and conscious of the fact that they, they are time poor. Um, and we also feel the need for to be quite pragmatic in our approach in order to engage them as much as we possibly can. Um, so we very much welcomed the call um, because we felt that it, 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 what we want really aligns with what the call wants. And we also saw it as a really, really good opportunity for um, people from teaching and learning centres like myself um, and also from staff development centres and HR and the institutions to work together, which doesn't often happen or doesn't always happen, work together to, to engage these people um, and to help support them in terms of their continuing professional development within the two key um, aims or the two key domains of teaching and learning enhancement and uh, building digital capacity. So our aims, the key aims of the project are we, we want to develop a kind of a fresh approach to professional development. And the freshness will come in the way that we plan on it being very collaborative um, and collegial. Uh, we want to, uh, a, we want the people to work together to build networks, um, to share experience. Um, we want to balance the strategic initiatives with the real-world challenges that they are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we want to design it in a way that ensures the maximum uptake, which is why we, we are coming at it from a very pr pragmatic um, way, um, that, so that it's developed to the needs of the people that we're trying to engage. Um, and of course, we, we plan you know, on evaluating, evaluating it the whole way along, uh, and looking at ways that we can develop a sustainable and scalable model. Um, it, it's key that we 
build networks of experience um, that the the people we're trying to engage get to work together work with each other within and across institutions and work with us um, and it's a very it's a great way for us to build up valuable relationships with those with those people as well um, and then also uh, we want to look at the resources that are, that are out there um, augment them um, and pull them together um, so that we can make sure that they are widely used and widely disseminated. And then, of course, our overarching um, aim is to develop leadership in the domains of digital capacity and the enhancement of teaching and learning. Uh, so in, in terms of how we will do it, the, the plan that we have here, and it looks quite linear there, but it won't happen in a linear fashion. All of these phases, we'll call them, um, of which we've identified four key phases. They will, they will overlap, some of them will happen in tandem, and evaluation will, will persist the whole way through the project. The way we see it happening is an, an initial kind of scoping exercise. Um, and in fact, we did, when we were considering whether to put in for the call in the first place, uh, in the lead institution in Anywhere Go Away, we, um, we contacted our 16 heads of schools and our five deans. Um, and they 14, 15 of the 16 heads responded to the email, which meant they read the email, and they replied to the email, which we felt in itself was actually really, really positive. And they responded in a very positive way. They were very keen to engage. They very much respected um, and were, were um, very appreciative of the fact that we were talking to them first and that we were looking at them as, you know, so that we could find out what it is that they need and then we could adapt our approach to them. Um, and five of the six, four of the five deans also um, responded positively. So, so we took great heart in this and this kind of propelled us forward. Um, so what we would do is we would build on this and in each of the institutions we would do, we would um, do a, a similar, you know, call in the first place just to see um, what the people, um, how people would like to go forward with this. And then we would look at more um, kind of in-depth scoping. We would organize small group interviews uh, with the, the people we're trying to engage, with the heads, uh, with the deans, and find out what it is they perceive their individual challenges to be. Um, this would be the start of a dialogue that we would hope would persist through the, the whole project and beyond. It would be the start of relationships within the institutions, with those key members, but also with ourselves uh, in the roles that we have in our institutions. We would look at how we would align their needs with our aims, uh, with the aims of the, the National Forum, uh, with the professional development framework, which is, is very important. Um, and from there then, we would look at a kind of designing a kind of a curriculum. So that would involve identifying expert speakers who are already, you know, have expertise in the areas that are priority and the challenges that are being faced. Um, we would arrange workshops and networking events and we would build resource packs. There's already a wealth of resources out there and we recognise that. And it, it's important that we capitalise on those and we pull them together. Often, uh, heads of schools they don't necessarily know the resources are there, and they don't have the time to go find them. They're not always aware that there are things there to help them in their roles, and a key to this project would be part of that, disseminating this, almost maybe sometimes translating it, taking away some of the jargon for them, um, and developing their vocabulary as we go along. Um, Delivery then would build on that, um, you know, delivering these professional development events, cognizant of the fact that these people are time poor. We would think, try and find ways that would make the best use of their time, and they'd be very targeted as much as possible. Um, stimula stimulating participation, stil stimulating discussion, um, embedding feedback throughout, um, and fostering this idea of networking. And one of the things that came back from our initial scoping was that the heads were very keen just to get together for a chance to talk about this stuff, which they don't always 
get. It's not often on their agenda. Um, and then, of course, the whole way through, we're looking at evaluating it, refining it, and, and seeing how it's going, um, in the hope that we can develop a kind of a sustainable um, model. Um, we have some example topics, and these have come from, these are projects that are already, have already are already in existence, there's resources on them. Some of them are national forum projects. Some of them come from um, the UK um, or internationally. Um, so these are some of the topics that we would see are key to teaching and learning and um, digital capacity. Um, and we would be keen to align these with the kinds of issues that are coming up when we are doing our needs analysis. Um, we wouldn't be addressing all of these. We would have to prioritise. So this is a kind of a matrix we would prioritise as we, as we go out and speak to the institutions and find out what it is they need to know. So I'm not going to talk to each of these. Um, but uh, be, we have a, a really nice, diverse team. And for each of these, there is one person on our team who has been involved in some way or another or will be involved in some way or another with these projects. So we do have that expertise or we have links to that expertise already, which is a really, really good start. Um, so all sounds great, but how are we going to do it, really? <laughs> um, and part of this is, I suppose, addressing um, what we're spending the money on. We would need to employ a coordinator for this. Um, and that person would work with the team. Um, they would be a shared resource amongst all the institutions, but um, they, would, they would have a home probably in, in the lead institution. Um, they would go out to each, each of the institutions, conduct these group interviews and do the survey of needs. We would envisage them, of course, and I should have mentioned this earlier, that the student voice is important, and that was something that came back in your feedback. We would see them liaising with student representatives, see them meeting with the education officers, um, and that those student representatives would have involvement in the project th throughout in some of the interviews and in also then later on in the, the events that were organized. Um, we would collate and mine the responses then from this initial scoping um, and align that with the supports and the development required, the existing supports and resources that are out there, uh, identifying the experts that would would help with with um, you know uh, come over talk to our to the members um, and the groups, um, and then they would also develop this kind of curriculum, coordinate the events, curate all the resources. They've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Develop the resource packs. And of course, I'm all the time aligning to the professional framework. Actually, I completely forgot. I have little handouts. And I do have one for everyone in the audience, because the audience is so much depleted. But this actually, it just has that matrix that I mentioned. But um, it also shows where we're mapping to the framework, because uh, I didn't want to bombard the slides. Uh, because Two moments, oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and yes, they would, uh, yes, we would make sure to publish all our outputs um, under an appropriate open license. It's very important that the, anything that is output from the project is free to use and share. And of course, the events that we would organize, they would be recorded, they would be streamed. And we would also see ourselves um, creating podcasts, interviews with some of our, our um, experts, uh, videos, and making them available online. Um, so in terms of the outputs, and maybe this addresses in some respect the, the value from money, um, is what, what is coming out of this? Well, we would have shared seminars and resources as much as possible. We do have to be aware of the fact that these people are time poor. Travel may not always be uh, we may not always be able to arrange that, but we would make sure that if we had experts coming, we would we would try and you know negotiate it that they may visit a couple of institutions or that we would stream some of the activities, um, have op online forums where possible, and try and engage people in this way. We would have these resource packs, which would consist of key briefing papers, uh, literature reviews. There's a lot of literature out there. Um, try and review that. Um, 
have those key readings for um, our, our, our audience um, and practical tools, um, audit tools that would help them in their planning and um, you know, looking at things like student retention, looking at the tools that are available to help them that they don't always know are there. Uh, okay, in terms of impact then, <laughs> speeding along, um, I, I won't talk to all of them, but we do see the potential impact. As I said, these people are, are priority and they have, play a pivotal role. Their, re their reach is, is, is far reaching in terms of the academics that they are dealing with who are doing a lot of really good stuff but is not always it's it's not always clear that what they're doing is supported by a huge body of research and scholarship um, and the national forum um, and also that eventually we would see that hopefully that the in terms of student experience the teaching and learning practice would be enhanced the value of it would be seen and this would filter and trickle down to the students and i'll stop because of there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.